Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. I'm Jim Helmer and in this video we're going to look at section 8.1 which is dealing with systems of linear equations. When it comes to systems of linear equations if we have two or more equations of lines we can graph them to see where they intersect to see where that solution is. Do they have a common point? There are three scenarios in which we may come across and the first one is if we have two different lines they're going to inter intersect in at least one place if they don't have the same slope. When they do have an intersection we say that this system is consistent. This line does intersect with this line and they are independent lines. They are two different lines. So we have something that's called consistent and independent. This is where we have a solution where we will find a single solution. Well what if we have two lines that have two different y-intercepts but they have the same slope? Well we know that lines that have the same slope never intersect. They are parallel. Well parallel lines are inconsistent and yet they're independent. They're two different lines but they're inconsistent because we will not find a solution. If we were solving this algebraically, these two lines, we would uh, find that A equals B when we actually go to solve it. We find out A and B are two different numbers. It's not the same. So there's no solution to this. They do not intersect. So we call this an inconsistent system. There is no solution. Then we have our third case. And our third case is where we have two lines that are actually the same line. And if that's the case, if they're the same line, they have the same y-intercept, they have the same x-intercept, they actually intersect everywhere. There are infinite solutions. One example, if I had x plus y equals 2, and I have 2x plus 2y equals 4. These are actually the same lines. They may appear different, but if I graph them, I actually find that they are the same. If I factor out a 2 for this, I get this line right here. This is called a dependent system, a consistent but dependent system. It's called consistent because, yes, there are solutions, but it's dependent because they are the same lines. There's actually infinite solutions. If we were solving this algebraically, we would find out that a number, maybe it's 4, equals 4. Well, that's a true statement. So if I get a true statement, I know I'm dealing with a dependent system. If I get a false statement, I know I'm working with an inconsistent system. And if I find a solution, I'm working with a consistent, independent uh, system. So let's actually look and see how we actually go about solving these algebraically instead of graphically. All right, there are two different methods that we're going to explore for solving systems of linear equations. And the first method is substitution. What we want to do is we want to solve this for one of the variables and then substitute it into the other equation. Now, looking at this, I could solve this for y, and I'll do that right here. I could say y equals, just subtract 2x from both sides, negative 2x plus 5, and substitute this value in for y. Now, the reason why I chose y in this equation is because, well, it had a very small coefficient, a coefficient of 1 making it the easiest to solve for. Now, I could have chose this equation as well. I could say, well, I can solve this for x. And if I did that, I'd get x equals negative 3y plus 5. So this, I could substitute into the other equation for the x value. Just put in negative 3y plus 5. Let's, uh, let's do this equation in for the y value. Now, x plus 3 times y, well, y is this value that I solved for, negative 2x plus 5 equals 5. And when I do that, I can distribute this, and I get x minus 6x plus 15 equals 5. Do a little bit of simplification, subtract 15 from both sides, combine like terms, negative 5x equals negative 10, and then I can solve for x x equals positive 2. Now, I've only found one of the values. Let's plug it back in and find the y value. I have an x. Well, 
I could plug it into this and solve it, but I'm going to plug it into this one because I know these are the same equation. I just rearranged them a little differently. So if I put in 2 here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 5 is a positive 1. y equals 1. So I'm going to write it right here. My solution is an ordered pair. I have two different lines <coughs> that at some point intersect. And that intersection is when x is 2, y will be 1. And I write my answer as an ordered pair right here. x is 2, y is 1. We have a consistent, independent system with these two equations with a single solution, 2, 1. Now, just uh, to explore this a little further, I could have done it a little differently. Since they're equal to the same value, I could have substituted this equation equal to this equation. They are the same values, <clears throat> another option. So we just kind of explore this, see what's the easiest. All right, let's, uh, let's look at elimination here. Now, to do elimination, one thing we have to be aware of is all of our variables and constants need to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation so that my x's and my y's are on the same side of the equation. I'm just going to subtract 4x to the other side to have that right there. Now I just rearranged it, so I'm going to get this out of the way. And now to do elimination, what I need to have is to choose a variable to have the same coefficient but of opposite sign. So I look at this and I say, well, I know 4 and 2 have common factors. So I'm going to multiply this equation by a negative 2 so that this coefficient of x is going to be the same as this but of opposite sign. And when I do that, I get positive 4x, negative 6y, and negative 26. Now, the reason why it's called the elimination method is because I'm choosing to eliminate x. And now, it's also called the addition method. So when I add these two lines, I'm going to see one of my variables is eliminated by adding them. So if I add this line with that line, the x's go away. 5y minus 6y is negative y. 23 minus 26 is going to give me negative 3. And now you can see I have a single variable that I can solve for. Just change the sign of both sides, y equals 3. Now, to find the x value, I can plug it into either one of my equations. It really doesn't matter. I can say, well, let's put the y in here. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 2x plus 9 equals 13. And go ahead and solve for x. Subtract 9 from both sides. Negative 2x equals 4. Divide by negative 2. x equals negative 2. Now, I found a y value, and I found an x value. One thing we always want to do is check our work. If it works in this equation, does it also work in this equation? Because we're looking for a common solution. So I can plug these two values in to the other equation and just make sure that it's a true statement. So negative 4 times negative 2 is a positive 8. 3 times 5 is 15. 8 plus 15 is, in fact, 23. So now I want to write it as an ordered pair. I know this works in both equations. My x is negative 2. My y is 3. So the ordered pair of this is negative 2, 3. We have a consistent and independent system where we were able to find one single solution. All right, let's take a look at a linear equation in three variables. Sometimes we're not dealing with just lines. We're actually dealing with planes. We have three dimensions. This is real world uh, where we have an x, a y, and a z, something maybe coming in or out of the board. And to illustrate it in two dimensions is a little difficult, so you'll just have to take my word for it. When we're solving something like this, we can apply either method of substitution or elimination. <clears throat> for this example, we're actually going to use elimination. Now, when it comes to three variables, what we have to do is step by step break it down to, so that we have two equations and two variables which means this is going to be a little tedious, but it is work that we can do. So since I'm going to do elimination, I'm going to pick two equations and eliminate one of the variables. Before I begin, I just assess it. And I say, well, these coefficients of z are 1. So it's going to be relatively easy to add or subtract or multiply or divide if my coefficient is 1. So I'm going to choose these two equations 
to eliminate, using the elimination method, the value of z. So by doing so, I can multiply this through by a negative. That's just going to change the signs, and I'll just write them up here. Negative x, negative y, negative z. Now they have the same coefficient of opposite sign. So I can use the elimination method by adding them. 2x minus x is just 1x. And I'm going to star this equation. This is my first equation. Negative 3y minus y is negative 4y. z minus z, we eliminated that variable. 5 minus 0 is just 5. So now we have a linear equation in just two variables. Well, now what we have to do is do the same thing again. We need to eliminate the exact same variable I chose the first time. So I'm going to do it with these two. And I'm going to call this equation asterisk, asterisk. So I can separate this as a different equation from this one. Now, I still want to eliminate the same variable z. So this time, I'm going to multiply it by a negative 4, because I want this coefficient to be the same, but of opposite sign. So I'm going to get negative 4 times this, negative 4 times that, and negative 4 times z. And now we can do elimination once again. Negative 4x, positive 4x, no more x's. Sometimes variables will cancel themselves when we're trying to cancel another. And that's OK. That's actually good. That's going to help us as we move along. Here we have negative 4y and a positive 2y gives me a negative 2y. And negative 4z and positive 4z, the z's are gone. That was our goal was to eliminate that. And then I have 0 and 4, which just gives me 4, equal to 4. Now, because the x's also eliminated themselves, now I can solve this for y. Essentially, once we have our two equations, we want to work them backwards. Maybe we want to do substitution or elimination here. And I could do elimination y. I, this is a value I could solve for. So let's go ahead and solve for that. Divide both sides by negative 2. And I find y is negative 2. Now I can work it backwards, and I can find out what x is. Plug y in. Substitute. x minus 4 times negative 2, my y value, equals 5. Well, negative 2 times negative 4 is a positive 8. Subtract 8 from both sides. I get x equals negative 3. So now I have a y value. I have a x value. The only value I'm missing at this point is a z. So I can come back to these equations. And I'm going to choose this one because it has the smallest coefficients, the easiest to do the math in. If this is negative 3 and this is negative 2, plus z equals 0, well, negative 2 and negative 3 are negative 5. Negative 5 plus what is 0? z must be a positive 5. Now, before I say, yes, this is my answer, I want to check it in the other two equations. And when I check this, I find that it's a true statement. Now, because we write our answers in ordered pairs, x, y, and z, because we have three variables, that's what I want to do here. I found my x to be negative 3, my y to be negative 2, and my z to be a positive 5. Here we have a consistent and independent system in three variables. All right, the last thing here. This is going to be your quiz for this video. I want you to attempt this on your own. You can try any method, whether it be elimination or substitution. Your choice. But I'm going to give you a real big hint on this one. This is not going to give you a nice ordered pair. Uh, realize that this is what's called a dependent system in three variables. But I want you to show the work, practice, try doing whatever methods that we covered, and show and prove that this is a dependent system. So this has been section 8.1, Systems of Linear Equations. Thank you for watching.